Hi guys and welcome to Freckle Finance. Today my video is going to be answering a question that was left on my Q&A video. It was actually two questions and that was what is your financial independence number and how do you calculate your FI number? And from going forward for this video, I'm going to call it FI number because it's a lot shorter. If you're new to this channel or you haven't subscribed already, make sure you click that subscribe button below and give a thumbs up for financial independence. So first of all, I want to start off with saying I actually do two different financial independence calculations to figure out the date that we will retire at. The one that I use on this channel gives us a bit of privacy so we don't have to give out the numbers, but also gives you guys a chance to see some progress. If I did a calculation and I said, we are retiring at 45, and every single time I updated you, I'm like, yep, it's still 45. It's not as exciting as me starting off from our coast FI number, or our coast FI date, which is what I use with you guys, and that is if we never save another dollar, we will be able to retire at X date because as we save more money, that number actually lowers. So I think I chose that because I really feel that that gives you guys a bit of a story and some progress. So to start off to figure out your FI date, you do need to figure out your FI number. Um, for us, that is actually 2.4 million. And I know that sounds like a lot, but in Can we plan to go back to Canada eventually. and. Although I know a lot of people will retire to cheaper cost of living areas, that's not where, what we want to do. We want to retire um, near family. So our number is large because it accommodates a more expensive area than a lot of other people in the financial independence community would want to retire. However, with that being said, if we chose to stay in Northern California, which is actually even more expensive to live in, then we would have to completely reevaluate our whole number. But at this point, the plan is to come back to the area kind of where we grew up and and retire there. And for us, our retirement date and our financial independence date are considered the same. However, I don't honestly know that my husband would actually retire early in the first place, but maybe he would just change up what he does for work and take on more risky work that doesn't necessarily make as much money type of thing. But at this point, we are counting them as the same date because it's so far away. I don't want to make any decisions about whether he will quit working or not at this point. So we're just saying that he will, and then he doesn't have to if he doesn't want to. For us, since our FI number is actually quite high, I do want to state that this number, since we're going to be 45, maybe younger, <laughs> could still be older when we actually reach our number if we end up recalculating anything. But there is a very, very good chance we are still going to have our kids at home and that our mortgage will not be paid off. We could pay off our mortgage and I could go, I could do another separate video if you guys are interested on why we are very unlikely to pay off our mortgage early if we don't have to, um, but we will still have a mortgage and that's why the number that we will need is going to be a lot higher. So because of that and similar to the cost of living calculators that I had to do, I had to estimate for things that do not occur yet such as kids activities, buying their clothes, going on vacation, including kids, a more expensive food budget, and all that stuff. So I basically did a full-on budget of what I expect to be the most expensive point in our lives while we potentially will not be earning anything other than our investment income. And that's basically when we have teenagers still at home, that's probably going to be the most expensive, or possibly if they're in university, that kind of time period. So it's a very expensive time to not be working and that's why our number is so high but it's important if you plan on doing that and if you're planning on having kids and the kids still be at home when you retire you need to take that into consideration you you can you know lower your lifestyle we are planning to keep our lifestyle pretty much the same though once you've completed your estimated retirement budget of your most expensive year you take that number you which for us was a monthly payment or a monthly amount and you times it by 12 to turn it into a year and then you gross it up because it's very important you will still be paying taxes for the most part depending on you could move to an area that doesn't have taxes but Canada has taxes so you have to gross it up because you will be paying taxes and if you estimate it based solely off what you're spending you're gonna have the wrong amount of money when you do retire or become financially independent. Once you have the grossed up yearly amount, you're going to multiply that by 25 and that's going to be your FI number. This number is based off of drawing 4% of the value within your investments every single year. If you think that's too high, you can do calculations for a lower amount, which will be multiplying by a higher number. And if you think that number is that you could increase it and have a higher withdrawal weight, rate, then you can lower the multiplication for that. 
However, generally people say 4%. Um, it's really up to you and it also depends on how much risk you're willing to take on. 4% is considered fairly low risk, but obviously there's always room to be lower risk when you're investing and living off an investment income. To calculate what your coast FI date will be, you'll take, so you have that number in your head for us, 2.4 million, and you take what you currently have in investments, you plug this into a compound interest calculator without adding any more yearly deposits at all. And the amount that you expect that you will make in the market on average every single year. Now do your research. We use 7% taking into account that 3% on 10% is going to be used for cost of living increases. So that's what we use. However, do your own research. I don't want to tell you guys